think it's a law in Hawaii that all Hawaiian kids have to play ukulele. I'm, I'm pretty sure that uh, it's the ukulele law. So as soon as your hands are old enough to go, you know, to make a little shaka sign, you get a ukulele, and then you, you know, learn to play it. And it's fun, and it's pretty easy. It's got four strings, and the chords are, you know, kind of right there, easy to make. And so you, you go that way for a while, and you have a blast for years. I remember uh, my brother and I used to go to the mainland to summer camp. Mom would, you know, say, okay, boys, you know, goodbye. <laughs> She put us on the plane to California. We'd play for the entire five hours, or just wailing on our ukuleles in our little plane seats. Can you imagine what that must have sounded like? Well, I worried for fear that uh, I wasn't exposing them to as much of the world music. I was a single parent, and I never had the kind of money, and concerts and things were not available to us, you know. <laughs> so I bought them Kingston Trio records. <laughs> I don't give a damn about a greenback, a dollar. I like to give it away. <laughs> they took to the music like ducks. And then I got them Chet Atkins, and they love Chet Atkins. So that was their early uh, adventure into non-Hawaiian music. And they loved it. Mm -hmm. In fact, the first paid engagement they had, I think uh, Keola must have been 10 years old. This is like we were in the, I think, uh Honestly, the fourth grade, and got hired to play a high school dance. You know. Can you imagine how desperate you have to be for entertainment to <laughs> hire a couple of fourth graders? It's like 10 bucks, man. Those, those money was huge. So we took them. So here's the intermission. The band goes out, and they're lighting their cigarettes, and these two kids are playing. And pretty soon, I hear the band director saying, Hey, those kids, they're damn good. Put out their cigarettes, and they came right in to listen to these two kids. Nine and ten years old. Don't give a damn about a greenback dollar. <laughs> so I knew he was destined for great things. <laughs> and, uh, you know, we went and, and sang our little songs, and everybody was clapping, and they really liked it, you know. And, and it's kind of the first time one had the feeling of, you know, sort of acceptance, uh, you know, with your ukulele and guitar. And, and, and funny how those, uh, those memories, uh, my life really hasn't changed that much. I mean, hopefully the music is a little better. <laughs> but I'm still kind of doing that stuff, you know, and, um, and having a great time doing it. I, I love what I do. I, I love my life. Maui, what a beautiful place to live. It's kind of an irony to me that, uh, you know, I, I make my living with, with music, but I really, in my heart of hearts, think that this kind of silence and, and, and these sounds, the, the wind rattling in the palm leaves and the, the ocean. These are the most beautiful sounds in the world. And um, so it's kind of ironic to me that, that the sound of silence is, is, is what I, I seem to love the most in my life, you know. As a guitar player, I love all kind of guitar playing, and uh, slack key is a specialty. It, it requires a lot of skill. It requires a guy who really knows what he's doing, like Beamer. There's no better slack key player than Beamer, and uh, I think most of the players realize that and recognize it and uh, really uh, honor him. Well, Ozzy Katani is one of the great slack key players of all time, and he and I share something uh, in common that we both studied Keola first. Keola's music brought me into slack key. It's the music I heard that captured, that captured me and kind of um, attracted me to the style and, and, um, and his music has influenced me over the years. He's especially influenced me in uh, things like adding bridge parts to arrangements and the way he um, uses chords and things like that. Yeah, I respect Keola tremendously. It was 30 years ago, 1971, and uh, I knew about Slack Key and I'd heard Slack Key. I'd listened to Sunny Chillingworth on uh, uh, with Marlene Sai and different records that my folks had and I would just like wear them out. And then I was reading the paper and I saw an ad for slack key guitar lessons and I kind of went boing. And I read it and it said, 
Kayola Beamer, and I was like, double boing, get me the phone, you know, quick. And so I got in there, and it took six lessons in six weeks, once a week, go take the lessons. And it just changed my world. And that's how I got into Slack Key, and I've just been sticking with it ever since. I wrote a song a couple years ago that I still love and, and still feel every time I get on that big plane. And I'd like to uh, sing it for you now. Looking out upon the city lights And the stars above the ocean Got my ticket for the midnight plane And it's not easy to leave again Took my clothes and put them in my bags Try not to think just yet of Looking out into the city night Oh, it's not easy to leave again And each time on all the city lights Stir up my mobile and each time on all the city lights will bring me back again. You are my Shoes and ladies Wondering which of my friends will be there Standing with their ladies around my neck Oh, it's not easy to believe We believe that there are um, guardian angels or protective spirits, almakua, spirit guides, whatever you want to, you know, whatever terms you want to use. We believe that these are very real and that they surround us and that they're, they're summoned when we're having difficulties in our lives. I have a tattoo of a shark on my leg and this is the almakua or guardian spirit for our family. And in the old days, it was an individual shark, and he was, he was fed every day, in the morning, in the evening, and, and he grew to understand that these 
this tribe or this family was taking care of him. So when they go out to fish, he would be there and he would protect them. And I have a true story of when I was a boy um, in a canoe with my grandfather, the ama or the arm of the canoe broke off and we were out in very deep water and it was, it was very dangerous. I'd never seen my grandfather afraid before, but he was afraid that day. And it was he, my brother, myself, we were just little boys. And uh, so he said a little prayer and, and sure enough, the amakua or the shark um, came underneath the canoe push it up a little bit and slowly push it towards the shore. And we have um, all our relatives who remember that day, I remember the canoe coming in and the shark splashing and the water splashing all around the canoe. And uh, it's, those things happen pretty amazing. I'm very honored to be a part of the Beamer family. And, uh, very powerful uh, connections to Hawaii's past and, and the music and dance of Hawaii. Well, I think he's appreciative of Hawaii, and I think he's appreciative of being part of the family and being nurtured in this land. So I, I've, I'm lucky that you know I'm, I'm not uh, didn't try to be a dancer or something like that. And the world is lucky too. <laughs> but uh, I'm, I'm I'm, I'm fortunate because I, I I found something that I love to do and and somehow managed to eke out a living doing it. You know. Sunrise on the mountain, moving over the tree. All of us work hard. Some of us have to work two or three jobs to, to make ends meet in, in Hawaii. But for most of us, there's one time of the day when we, we take a minute and we pause from whatever we're doing and we look out at that beautiful ocean or the clouds or the sky or the mountains. And, and something happens to you in here, you know, just, you just feel this gratitude, you know, to be a part of that, to be here. And we never forget that. And so we're proud to be island born. So proud to be island born. So proud to be Funding for this program was provided by Maui Fest Hawaii, a celebration of music, arts, culture, and film on the islands of Maui, Molokai, and Lanai. To order a DVD of Kiho Alu, Keola Beamer, please visit jazzalleytv.com.